Dragon Quest. Not many other games represent what it is to be a JRPG like this series does. From its story elements and gameplay mechanics, this franchise screams old school JRPG. While the other huge franchise Final Fantasy has decided to go with a more innovative approach, the Dragon Quest series has always remained true to its roots and sought only to refine its formula over time. Neither formula is better or worse, they're just different. But right now, let's examine the latest entry into the Dragon Quest franchise, 11, Echoes of an Elusive Age. Dragon Quest XI is what the franchise has been since its inception in 1986 in the Nintendo Entertainment System. A JRPG that sets you about on a quest to save the world with your companions. In fact, Dragon Quest was one of the first games to set trends, define tropes, and archetypes that we still see in the genre today. As great as the Dragon Quest IP of Lucy related titles has sold in the Japanese market, it has always struggled to take a strong hold on the hearts of Western audiences. I previously mentioned the series has been painstakingly faithful to its roots. The game's creator, Yuji Hori, the enemies you fight, Akira Toriyama's art style, and Koichi Sugiyama's music have all remained consistent throughout the entire mainline series. This ensures that each Dragon Quest game has a very familiar vibe to it, and while some get frustrated with this risk-adverse approach to game design, it does assure that every entry into the franchise meets a certain standard of quality. I think it's important to understand this series past to know how far it's come and what's changed and what's remained the same. And now that we've taken a quick summary of those roots, it's time to take a deep dive into the specific aspects of Dragon Quest XI. I believe that one of the main reasons Dragon Quest has had some problems catching on with Western audiences is that the stories of the franchise have for the most part remained rather generic or lackluster when compared to that of its Final Fantasy brothers. Particularly the Final Fantasy games taking place after Final Fantasy 3 where the stories really pick up and become engrossing. However, Dragon Quest VIII Journey of the Cursed King put quite a bit of emphasis on the story, making it more exciting and unique and it was extremely well received in the West. Square took the same approach with this game. The game has a huge emphasis on story and the overarching plot of the entire game has quite a bit of intricacies. This translated into Dragon Quest XI being the best release the West has ever seen for a Dragon Quest game. The story revolves around a hero who is the chosen one dubbed the Luminary in this world and you are destined to defeat the darkness. The only problem is some of the people in this world see the Luminary as a harbinger of destruction and darkness and they shun you and they force you to go on the run. You travel the world gathering companions preparing to fight the big bad of this world who is Mortigan, the Lord of Shadows. While this aspect of the game isn't really unique, I believe the cast of characters is where the game really stands out. You have a plethora of companions on your journey and each of them feel very unique and different from each other. This cast more than makes up for the silent protagonist, so if you are worried about that, don't. The game also does a very impressive job of avoiding character tropes that often turn away a lot of fans from this type of game. Some of my favorite characters throughout the journey were Eric, Jade, and Aeth, who I can't mention by name because spoilers. Unlike Final Fantasy where most of the game is focused on the overarching plot, Dragon Quest takes a quite different approach. Each town or city you visit has something that will help you towards the end goal of the game, but while you are there, you are helping out the locals with their local problems and they often don't involve world ending consequences. I really find myself appreciating this approach and the fact that sometimes it's exhausting to go from world ending scenario to the next. In addition, the game takes great advantage of these small scale problems to further flesh out and really develop your allies. I really began to love these characters through these moments as I feel you get to know them as regular people just trying to chip in and do their best to help the world out. 
Further character development is reinforced through the party talk system. Essentially after any minor event happens in the game you can go to the party talk menu and you get to kind of see what all your different party members are thinking and I think it's one of the best parts of the game as it gives you a peek into their mind and kind of really builds the minute details of each character. All of this adds up to a story experience that is satisfying throughout the entire game. It should be noted however that after the main game is completed there is a very substantial amount of post game content. This content is essentially a continuation of the game's story and makes the game more complex and Final Fantasy-esque, which many people enjoyed. It does however remain controversial and I will touch on it in the last portion of this review. The gameplay of Dragon Quest XI is simple but effective and proves that turn-based RPGs are still viable in today's market of video games. Something I've been hard on Square for for the past decade or so has been how they've treated the Final Fantasy battle system. There's been multiple interviews with directors of Final Fantasy games saying that turn-based battles don't translate well into the modern era of gaming or that they really just aren't a possibility in the modern age and Dragon Quest XI has taken these claims and clearly made them false. The game has sold approximately 4 million copies at the time of recording this review, all with an extremely simple, traditional turn-based combat system. Games like Bravely Default and Radiant Historia have implemented turn-based battle systems but with a flair or a twist, but Dragon Quest XI stays so traditional and in its roots, and that is what makes this combat system so beautiful. The game is simple and doesn't really have any learning curve to speak of. Battles consist of you and four party members taking on monsters, and you can switch in and out of battle any of your party members at any time, they just can't act on the same turn that they are subbed in, and this adds a lot of interesting strategies to boss fights later in the game. Each character has plenty of spells and abilities to turn against the enemies in battle, and the amount of spells and abilities in this entire game is truly astonishing. There is just a ton of stuff to unlock, and most of that is done through the character builder, which is pretty much a skill tree. The closest thing I can compare it to is the license board in Final Fantasy XII. Different characters can go in different direction with what weapons and abilities they learn. Serena, for example, can learn harp abilities while also specking in spears or wands. Speaking of the gear system in the game, it is about as basic and simple as they come, which is a good thing. You don't have to worry about learning any new crazy systems or armor, rating, stuff like that. It's pretty straightforward equipment boost stats. What they do do to spice this system up though is add a forge mode where you can craft or improve your weapons and armor. The mini game for the forge is deceptively addicting and fun and making the perfect armor with a plus three rating is uber satisfying. Most normal encounters are pretty easy to win and don't require too much planning so you can place your allies on fight wisely or any of the other preset tactics in the game and they will act on their own accord. When bosses arise, however, you can switch your team to follow order so you can have full control of them and they fight directly as you command. Or you can be a control freak like me and have them set to follow orders the entire game. It doesn't matter. The most important thing to me about a battle system is, is that you never feel like you are cheated into death unfairly, and in Dragon Quest XI this is the case. Everything seems fair and balanced. There aren't any random encounters in this game which will be to the delight of many people who find them excruciating to deal with. Fighting all the monsters you see roaming around however will make you extremely overpowered and you will be able to breeze through the game pretty easily for the most part. This will also be to the relief of many fans of the franchise because Dragon Quest games are notorious for the long and tedious grinding sessions required to complete the game. One small thing that also breaks up the team of the game's battles is the fact that you can freely walk around the battlefield as you please. This does nothing to give you a tactical advantage or change how the battle proceeds, but it is exciting and interesting to walk around and see the heroes battle from a different perspective. There is also a mechanic called pep power in this game where after taking enough damage, your character gets pepped up, essentially you become a super saiyan. Using this pet power, you can unleash team-based attacks that are not only extremely powerful, but have beautiful animations to boot. Apart from combat, exploring the world is the second most important part of RPG gameplay. 
The game has a very sizable world map that encourages exploration at times, but at others it seems like a necessary open space in the way of getting from point A to point B. Exploring the open map usually rewards treasure chests or forging ingredients, and the dungeons of the game for the most part are just straight hallways with no branching paths or nooks and crannies to explore, which is a little disappointing. There are very few puzzles to solve in these dungeons as well, so I think the dev team wanted to maintain a more streamlined approach to this game's open world and dungeons. Although the exploration is lacking somewhat, that doesn't mean the game's world isn't beautiful. This game is just plain beautiful. Dragon Quest has perfected its craft and they really know how to make a game look beautiful on modern consoles. The art style is so distinctly Akira Toriyama but with some twists added into it. The combination of the characters and their cell shaded graphics along with the beautifully rendered world make for the perfect duo. The game's art style is truly unique and really does a good job differentiating itself from any other game's art style. The classic monsters look better than they ever had, and when you're watching them roam around on the world map in the huge variety of environments, it truly is a pleasure. The towns and cities in Dragon Quest XI are not only bustling, they are beautiful, and on top of that they are cleverly designed and named in homage to locales across the real world. For example, the town of Lanalulu is based off of Honolulu and has a very Hawaiian beachy vibe to it. In addition to that, the translation team did an absolutely phenomenal job with this game. The number of different accents that were translated into this game are astonishing. They added Spanish, French, Italian, and other accents almost flawlessly into the game. To further illustrate this point, in the town of Hato, everyone speaks in haikus, and I can't imagine the translation difficulties that must have arose with that. And as if that wasn't enough, all of the mermaids in this game speak in rhymes, and even that has been translated very efficiently. And usually when a translation gets mentioned, it's because there's a lot of problems with it, and that it's not good. But in this case, they outdid themselves truly with this translation job, and it just shows how much work and time and effort went into this game to make it a truly polished final project. The music of this entry into the franchise in particular has been extremely polarizing and still is to this date. Many people detest the MIDI synthesized instrument sounds, finding them to be loud and obnoxious. Others find it to be very reminiscent and faithful to the older games in the series, sounds and tunes. I in fact personally really enjoyed the music of this game how it is and haven't found it to be horrible at all as people claim it to be. I do appreciate a beautifully orchestrated soundtrack however and that makes me understand why some people feel the way they do. In fact the Steam version of this game there are mods so that you can have a fully orchestrated soundtrack so for those who that's a big deal for I recommend you go with the PC version of this game. Another quarrel that people have with the game's music is there isn't a great deal of variety. The game uses a lot of general themes or reuses themes from previous Dragon Quest games for many different parts of the game rather than making unique new themes for all the different situations of the game. Again, I don't find this to be a major issue because Dragon Quest XI's music is fantastic in my opinion and very well made. I mentioned earlier that some of the post-game content affects the story of this game in a very significant way and this is probably one of the worst parts about the game in my opinion. I thought where the story ended originally was perfect, there was sacrifice, triumph, tragedy, and it truly left an emotional impact on me. But many of the ordeals of the main game get erased through the time travel element introduced in the post-game. To me it didn't feel right the way the post game was handled. The game gives you a sense of closure and conclusion, 
but then the game's story continues without missing a beat in the post game. And this is not just grinding for a secret ending or a secret dungeon, there is a legitimate 20 to 30 hours of extra story content on top of the already 60 plus hour game. This is where a lot of the intriguing, albeit confusing, plot details arise, and the game becomes more Final Fantasy-esque. In the end, people looking for more content I think will be pretty happy with this, and some people will be very happy actually with the true ending of the game, as it provides tie-ins to the original trilogy of Dragon Quest games. I think having good post-game content that was story-driven is really important, but I feel like it could have been handled much better and just called part of the main game as it is pretty essential to understanding the game in its entirety. In the end though, this slight problem I have with this game doesn't hold it at all back from being a fantastic experience. It is one of my favorite RPGs that I have ever played to date and I have played a lot of them. I think it is the perfect entry point for not only a newcomer to the Dragon Quest series, but also a newcomer to the JRPG genre. The game is just so polished and well rounded that it gives the perfect experience of playing a game that is simply made the right way. If you haven't yet, do yourself a favor and go play Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of an Elusive Age.